Hey everyone, and welcome back to Stellaris as the Roman Star Empire. Now, in the last episode, we have once more uh, decided to enter the Pandora system to wipe out these crystallite asteroids and these hivers once and for all to get this mineral rich system under control now uh, we've been successful in destroying one of their nests but there is several more that we need to destroy and i've decided for at least the beginning here i turned off the ui and i want to see if this looks better for our fight so let's move forward we have a lot of other things that we need to do as well but we'll get to this after this fight so we'll continue on and we'll check out this battle i wonder if this is better now let's well, maybe move in a little bit. It's very difficult to actually get a good, good look at everything. Um, but I think this is cool. This is this works well. Maybe we can just check out if one of these... I want to see... I want to actually see one of those explode. One of these smaller things. I don't see that. It's really difficult to follow them. And yeah, they're hardly even being targeted, honestly. So, yeah, I'm not really seeing any of them destroyed yet. It's hard to say. Obviously, without the UI, I currently don't know how we're doing. If we're actually doing fine or we're losing right now. The problem is, look at this. Our destroyers don't even get to shoot because they're hunting these little strike craft with the flak. They're not even using their guns to shoot a thing. This is basically just our corvettes doing this. Um, so I don't know if this is so good. But let's uh, turn this back. I'm getting a little bit uh, afraid. That we're not finishing this here. Yeah, see, uh, we have the armor destroyed here. Um, I think we can go a little bit faster. Um, and almost destroyed it here. But we are not yet really getting to the point where we attack the actual hole. Oh, we have done it. Hmm. It's just that we're kind of trapped in the middle. Our destroyers are not actually dealing any damage right now. That's a problem. I certainly think that... Um, after we have destroyed this in this base, we're gonna retreat. Yeah. Yeah, but now that we are, now once we actually focus, it's it's looking good. Look at our damage output. Holy hell. We're very efficient. 200% efficient. Yeah, they're only 100% efficient. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we're getting this, and then I hope we'll focus on... Oh, look at this! It's already healing back! Because no one's focusing on it. I hope that these are too far away to actually deal any damage. What are you doing? Can you attack this? Both of my fleets, please. You engage here. Once you're done with this. Come on. Finish this off. And then I think we'll actually go home for a while. And re... Yeah. Reload our strength. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Construction complete. We finished the construction that we can't really yeah, deal with right now. And... Okay, finally our destroyers are doing stuff as well. This is how I like it. I mean, they could do a little bit more, I guess. What is this one doing? Nothing, really. Non-aggression pact in invitation. Who is this doing? The Theocratic Republic. The Kantari Sacrosanct Alliance. The galaxy presents enough threats without having to worry about a war between the Roman Star Empire and the Cantari Sacrosanct Alliance, who suggest entering into a non-aggression pact. Um, honestly, I'm going to accept this because we are without friends, which is one of the things that I definitely want to check out in today's episode, but I would like to see if we can finish killing off this, this base here. Once we do that, we're gonna... We're gonna move home, um, and then I want to talk about our diplomatic situation it seems like we killed all the strike craft but yeah you guys you gotta move closer like you're actually you're not even shooting it seems like maybe they can't maybe they're i don't know oh you are shooting okay it's just very slow uh, loading time but there it is destroyed okay so with that done uh half of this is destroyed i will say you are both to be sent home. I hope this works. Uh, we lost... Did we lose something? Uh, yeah, I guess we can check this out here. Uh, apparently we lost not a single ship. Not a single ship. Now it doesn't show that we have destroyed uh, this third hiver. But I'm pretty sure we did. Maybe that's because 
we destroyed it before the reload or before the yeah restart um that might be it okay let's move a little bit faster because i don't think we're gonna have to engage these and we'll come back for more but yeah that's amazing primus Ves vesnius and primus sturtinius have been successful and um, we will yeah um heal up our fleets we'll come back for the rest but i'm pretty certain that we can defeat them now okay our construction ship is done here let me see mm, yeah what else we can do give us a little oh we don't have any resources right yeah so this is obviously a little bit of a problem we have no resources whatsoever because the upkeep is incredibly high like 80 minerals so we really need the system um yeah to get back on track but yeah um actually here's the thing we'll do this slowly we've seen the fights and I want to actually take some time to check out the situation that we're in right now. First of all, we're going to start with our current ruler, Basileus Augustus Gaius I. Now, his agenda is a scientific leap, giving us extra research speed. He also likes to focus on corvettes, and he's a world shaper. Now, we don't have any terraforming abilities, but if we have any... Um, clear blockers then we should probably get rid of them and uh, if we any if we get any research about uh, tile blockers we should research that as well a uh, Sirius might have something no nothing either here and then but we can upgrade uh, a science building I think we will do that but then again we don't actually have the resources for this right now still we, I, I guess we can afford one and um, this would be society, a biolab. Alright, there you go. And here, there's nothing we can clear, unfortunately. Okay, that's too bad. Um, our construction ship can't really do anything at the moment, so we'll just have to wait. And yeah, that's kind of that. But maybe there's an edict that we can check out. Policies and edicts. Education, uh, recycling, healthcare, farming, research grants. I think this is something... Our current Basileus would go for extra research speed. We want to have a scientific leap. So let's go for that. Information, quarantine, no. Mapping the stars, I could see that. But I don't think we'll, we'll do it either. And still have the capacity overload active. That's just going to stay active. We could also make a case for education, for an education campaign. But probably won't do that. Yeah, we should also probably have a look at our um, overall policies. And while we're in this window, I think I might just do that. So our war philosophy is uh, unrestricted wars. Um, where basically, war is a dish best served frequently and to those who will not cook for themselves. That's uh, interesting. But yeah, I, I feel like this makes sense as militarists. We're just going to take whatever. Because liberation wars basically means... We must uh, further our own interests even when they run contrary to the interests of others. Claiming other system is only allowed during defensive wars. Animosity, Casus Belli on Rivals, is replaced with ideology, Casus Belli. Yeah, I don't think we will do any of that. And basically, this means we can only... We cannot declare wars. So that's uh, good how it is. Food stockpiling is good. We changed that. Orbital bombardment. Indiscriminate. Indiscriminate. Allows the full use of the orbital weaponry with no regards to life on the surface. I think that's fine. Native interference. We have unrestricted interference. Even the most prone to life form is but another act on the stage of the galactic conflict. Should they lack the strength to resist, what right do they have to be master of their own fate? Yeah, I think there's no problem with that. Native enlightenment is prohibited. No native would be ready to grasp the wonders we have discovered and exposing them to the truth of the galaxy would carry enormous risks. Mm -hmm. We could enlighten primitives. We might want to change this. Our technological advances could potentially be shared with more primitive societies. Because we did find a primitive society here. Uh, I'm not sure if we can currently check them out. An arctic undamaged world owned by the Bopakstruk civilization. They're in the late medieval age. But they do have alien pets here and Pitharian stone. And... Are just generally kind of an interesting thing. Unfortunately, we can't check out the surface right now because we don't have a ship here, but this might be interesting. So we'll have to get back to this policy. Uh, but for now, it's fine. Resettlement is allowed. Uh, controls whether or not we are allowed to forcibly relocate pops. Yeah, I think that's fine. We're the emperor. We say where people live. 
Uh, this policy controls whether or not newly acquired planets should have some of their tiles appropriated from non-citizen species. I, I don't know what that means. The land that our empire controls belongs to all of its inhabitants. Hmm, I don't really know what that means, but yeah, whatever. First contact protocol. Is currently aggressive. Unknown dangers may hide among the stars. To ensure our continued survival, we must be ready to strike without hesitation. We'll allow no hostile action to be taken against unknown life forms, and only retaliate if we are to be... Um... I... I think I might want to change this to peaceful. We're not... I mean... We're not exactly aggressive. I think this is actually something I'm gonna change. Um, we don't need to be aggressive. Can attack neutral entities. Cannot attack neutral entities. I'm not sure if these guys... It says hostile right here. So they're not neutral. Uh, hmm. Well, let's, let's keep it there. Initial border status is closed. I think that's fine. Robotic workers. Ah, so this is getting interesting. Are allowed. The benefits of automation are obvious and immense. For the future of our people, we cannot afford to ignore the opportunities. Yes. Um, because we're materialist. Core world's population. Citizens only. Our core worlds are the heart of our empire. No lesser species shall be permitted. Um, all pops are permitted to live in the core worlds. We'll probably change this to citizens and slaves only. Non-enslaved pops without full citizen will mi migrate away from core worlds. Probably how we're going to have this. Refugees are welcome right now. Citizen species only. We'll keep it... I mean, right now this doesn't matter. I think this only comes up a little bit later. Slavery is allowed. Of course it is. And per... Actually... Cannot enslave pops. Allows the enslavement of pops within our empire. We might prohibit this. But I don't think this is the emperor to do this. And purge displacement is only allowed. All right. Good, so we just had a look at the policies. Wasn't exactly what I had planned necessarily, but it's good to have an overview over this. Um, yeah, I see ourselves as, I mean, we are authoritarian, we are militaristic and materialistic, but we're never fanatic in any way. I think we take a somewhat mm, practical approach to decisions. And uh, I think we're very flexible when it comes to adopting our... Uh, our stance um, in the galactic world. But yeah, the galactic world, you know what I mean. The galactic stage. Uh, anyways, that's one thing I want to check out. Our emperor, our heir, Res, Eris, is a fertility preacher and focusing on destroyers instead of corvettes. Uh, that's fine. We'll have to see what kind of uh, agenda she has. Um, but yeah, for now, I would like to check out our contacts because this is something we haven't really done all that well. Because we had so many come in, and basically I skipped over them relatively quickly because I wanted to, well, I wanted to get to this fight. And now that I know we win, I'm not as pumped anymore because I know we're going to be able to, to take it. But yeah, the artisans, uh, don't think there's much we need to talk about them yeah, right now. But these guys I would like to check out. So, a military junta, they have six planets with 82 population. They have Xarians here, interesting, Avarians and Gorothi, they're equivalent, but their capacity and fleet power is superior, but not by much, I suppose. They're on Avar Prime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have a lot of, okay, they have a lot of systems. They are in a research agreement with the Holy Xarian Empire, interesting. They have rivaled the great Tekathan authority, which is this nation here. Uh, and what are they? They are a military junta, an oligarchy. oligarchy. They have a corvi system, reducing resettlement costs and a free haven migration attraction. This government is a militaristic form of an oligarchy where power rests with the counts of high-ranking military officers who oversee all matters of state. They love people, but fight. Um, I guess we can get a... I guess we can probably... Um, 
We can probably trade with them something. We have a lot of energy credits and we need minerals. So maybe this is something we can do. They give us some minerals instantly. How about that? Anything you would do? Like 300 and I'll give you... They don't want... They don't like our uh, stuff, apparently. What if I give you food? Is that something? They don't care. They don't care about anything that we that we give them. That's unfortunate. Oh, is it just because they don't like us? They have no opinion. Is there anything we can do to improve relations? We can open borders to them. These honor-bound warriors. Um, I feel like we might. Uh, where are they actually? Oh, that's those guys. I th somehow I thought we were talking about them. Do we want to open borders for them? Uh, has closed borders. Cast his belly against the... Let's open borders with them because I think that improves relations. Um, yeah. We'll welcome you back. Sure. Uh, okay, that means they like us more. And let's see if you now want to give us some minerals. How about How about this? Huh? No, they still don't care. Wow. Okay. Still, I think it's good. We need to start making some friends, so that's fine. Now, then, let's check out the other people that we have. Uh, this is the feudal realm we checked out already. These reptilians. They're still in the uh, medi late medieval age. Then the Kantari Sacrosect Alliance. Now, they are superior to us. Wow, they have close to 100 people. Nurians and Rathalians. They're currently... In an offensive war of conquest. Interesting. Their enemies are the Great Hithian Empire and the Kingdom of Yondarim. Ah, that's why they want to have non-aggression pact with us. Because they're currently in a war. They're receptive as well. This empire is interested in closer relations with us. But they don't like us. We could open borders to them. We have a non-aggression pact. I, I guess we'll open borders to them. Um, and we'll see. Our trust is growing. We'll see if we can maybe trade something. We need minerals. So let's let's just ask him if they want to give us something. Do you need this? Ah, see. Okay, they are interested. Very nice. I will give them maybe a thousand because we've got we've got so much. Let's. Oh, okay, they can't really give more. Um. Then that's fine. I think. Cool. 90% uh, trade willingness. Due to spiritual seekers personality. Cool. So let's get 200 minerals. That's I think a fair deal. Very nice. Then who else have we got? The Kantaris. So we might actually be friends with them. They were not very friendly in the beginning. But it might get better. Now these. The clans of the. Oh you know what I forgot. Ah, damn it. I should have checked something else. I did not check their republic here. So, their democ yeah, democracy, holding elections every 10 years. They have an idealistic foundation, making the people more happy. And a parliamentary system. A faction influence gain plus 25%. Uh, this governs a spiritualistic form of a democracy where a religion council supervises the democratic process and serves in an advisory role. All right. Okay, let's check out more people. We also have the clans of Emery's Emerald. Now, they do not like us. They are Democratic Crusaders, an assembly of clans, also Democratic. And they have a warrior culture, which makes their army stronger and, yeah, cost less. And they are also mer meritocratic. Mer meritocratic. Uh, leader pool size and cap. This government is a militaristic form of democracy where all free clan warriors can make their voices heard. They're xenophile, egalitarian, and militaristic. Why do they hate us so much? It's an autocracy. But they're also inferior. Right, those are these guys. I don't think... Yeah. Giprak Machine Uprising? That's interesting. They are fighting a machine uprising. Okay, so there's a lot of things that we don't know about. 
Yeah, um, okay, they were kind of not important. I don't think they would actually trade with us. I mean, we could try, but I doubt it. Yeah, it says negative, yeah, unfriendly attitude, so that's not going to happen. Okay, who else have we got? We've got the Crate Decathan Authority, which is this strong empire here. They are pacifist, however, spiritual seekers, a feudal empire. Uh, upon ruler death, a designated successor becomes a new ruler, just like we have it. They have functional arch architecture, and they are a feudal society. Effects of subject power on relations is reduced. I don't really know what that means. But this government is a feudal autocracy where the mon monarch rules indirectly, granting offices and territories to vassals in exchange for obligations in the form of taxes and military service. Alright, they have a lot of population. Um, yes. Uh, okay, and what's here? They have a non-aggression pact with the Yondarim. Let me see if there's something we can do. We could open borders to them. I mean, they're a pacifist. I don't really see the problem. We can open them borders here and let's see if we can go for a trade deal where they give us something. Wants to trade away. Ah, they don't want to give away minerals. What about a research agreement? Um... Nah, no, this doesn't work. What about this? Why negative a thousand? Won't trade due to neutral attitude. Okay, fine. That's okay. We might be able to get this with someone else. Who else is there? Then we've got the Xarians. Yeah, they don't really like us at all because they're evangelizing zealots. An enlightened monarchy. They also have an empire. Um, they have this syncretic evolution, which we obviously discussed already, starting the game with four pops of another subservient species. And they are philosopher kings um, getting extra... Oh, they have amazing uh, rulers, basically. This government is a her hereditary form of enlightened autocracy where a strong emphasis is put on the knowledge and qualifications of the ruling monarch. And they are unfortunately superior in all regards and they do not like us. Yeah, I don't think there is much we can do here. Um, don't think there's, that's going to happen. Yeah, unfriendly. All right. The God Empress, Xir Gilis I, is currently ruling 91 years old. Interesting. I like how they have their little book in the background. Um, yeah, then the Kingdom of Yondarim. Um, they're also... Wow, their fleet power is overwhelming. Authoritarian and fanatic spiritualists slaving despots and they're a divine empire. They have imperial cults and an aristocratic elite, just like we do. Um, this government is a form of a spiritualist, spiritualistic autocracy. Everything is shaped by the official state religion, and the ruler is worshipped as an infallible living god. Yeah. Infidel beast, your uncouth mewling is heard by the king of Yondarim. What do you want? I mean, I don't think we're actually... They just don't like us because we have closed borders. But if we were to open the borders, um, this might change. They're still unfriendly. Uh, we could guarantee their independence. I don't think that's necessary. They're in two wars with the Sacrosact Alliance and two unidentified empires. Hmm. Preventive war. Many interesting things happening. Uh, they have also truces. So they have really been fighting for a long time. It's interesting because so far we haven't really done anything. Okay, then the Lorongos, we already checked them out. I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything cool they want to do. It seems like they have only met us so far. Because um, they don't have closed borders to anyone else. Then we've got the nation of Vetirius Primus. Once again superior. They're federation builders, xenophiles. We should probably improve relations with them as well by opening borders. Because I don't think they're going to harm us necessarily. Uh, your hospitality and trust are appreciated. Let's see if we can... Off, uh, they're also unfriendly. Because we're tyrants and have slavery policy. Damn it. I just want to trade with people. Oh, yeah. Actually, and let's check out their thing. Uh, representative democracy. They have an efficient bureaucracy, just like we do. But they have cutthroat politics. This government is a representative democracy where citizens vote on officials who are elected to represent them. Huh. 
Whenever you divide and conquer the division you leave behind is a wound upon the galaxy. We'll tend to those wounds, but we won't forget who made them. Alright. And then we have only the Marauders. Wow, that was quite a lot. Uh, a lot of empires that we haven't really uh, talked about. Um, I'm glad we did it now. And we also have something else that we need to check out. Because our uh, factions... Now that's planets and sectors... It's not that important, but our own factions. Now, this is something important as well. We have the order... Actually, the biggest faction right now is the United as One Party, uh, led by one of our scientists. And I... Yeah, they're autocratic. Um, Imperial dictatorial authority will please them. They want to have a stratified society, ensuring that a stratified society, be that a caste system, limited citizenship or slavery or purging will please them. Traditional domination. Okay, we can easily adopt that to make them happy. And extra national authority uh, means having subject nations. Okay, we can actually keep them happy relatively easily. Faction support, total 51. Okay, and happiness is relatively high as well. Then we've got the Association of Robotic Sciences. AI is allowed dull edge, staying ahead of the curve and not allowing any fellow empires be more than equivalent. Yeah, we're kind of behind in that, but that's something our current ruler wants to change. Science without borders, signing research treaties, we'll try and do that. In traditions of discovery, which we already have. All right, and then lastly, we've got the Order of the Burning Star. I think those are the fighters. Yeah, they're militaristic. So we've got a techno yeah, totalitarian faction, desire strictly certified societies, then we've got the materialists, techno technologist, factions design, empire-wide embrace of scientific progress and the fruits of technological advancement. They dislike politically motivated bans on certain avenues of research, as well as being outpaced by other empires. And then the Order of the Burning Star, imperialist factions desire dominance over the other empires. They like rivalries and conquering other empires and dislike relying on others. Okay, we have destroyed a space-dwelling leviathan. Imperial hegem hegemony, installing ourselves as overlord, local rivalry, Trad traditional supremacy, conquest, aggressive, aggressive diplomacy. Hmm. But there's nothing we can do to please them. It only displeases them if we don't do it. As for our population, most people are authoritarian, um, but that is on the down uh downward path more people are becoming militarists but there's also a lot more people becoming pacifists apparently and yeah what else is growing spiritualists are receding materialists are growing and xenophile is also receding interesting okay well that was Quite a bit to take in. Um, there's actually one thing I would like to check out. Diplomatic map mode. And I do want to find out if we can maybe get a research agreement with you. That would be, of course, ideal. I mean, why not, right? We could give you a little bit more energy credits. If that makes you happy. Yes, it does. Very nice. Can probably even reduce that a little bit more. Nope, that was too much. There you go, perfect. Uh, for the research agreement, how much do they give us? 7137. Oh yes, they're far ahead. That's actually gonna be really good for us and I feel like this fits our um, agenda, obviously, and it will make one of our factions happy. Okay, I guess we'll just wait for, um, yeah, for all of this to come through. Can I get rid of this? Uh, this is the opinions. How much people like us. I do wonder... Actually, can we maybe get a research agreement with you as well? This might be possible. You didn't want to trade that stuff, right? Actually, now you're fine. Ah, right. You just didn't like any of this. Uh, how about research agreements? No? 
because they're neutral. Okay, unfortunately. I think I may have checked that already. But we might be able to get along with them. So currently, the Kantari might be some friends of ours. That could be happening. What's this? AI attitude? Uh, not really sure what that does. And then neighbor map mode. Uh, let's get out of here. Neighbor map mode. What's that? That they're neighbors? I don't really know what that means. Okay, I will just go back to Empire map mode. Okay, yeah, uh, there was a lot to take on today. Um, I know we didn't actually move forward at all and still covered 30 minutes. But I think it was kind of important to check the diplomatic situation. And we did start off with a little bit of a space battle, which will continue in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching so far. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I will see you next time.